<laughs> uh, a lot of tomfoolery. It was an immense achievement. Well, Mr. Higgins? A triumph, Mrs. Pierce, a total triumph. Higgins, you were superb. Absolutely superb. <laughs> Tell us the truth now. Weren't you a little bit nervous once or twice? No, not for a second. <laughs> not during the whole evening? Not at the moment. I thought we were going to win hands down. I felt like a bear in a cage, oh, hanging oh, about, oh, nothing oh. to do. It was an immense achievement. If I hadn't backed myself to do it, I'd have given it up two months ago. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, uh, a lot of tomfoolery. Higgins, I salute you. Oh, silly people don't know their own silly business. Tonight, old man, you did it. You did it. You did it. You said that you would do it, and indeed you did. I thought that you would rue it. I doubted you'd do it. But now I must admit it, that succeed you did. You should get a medal or be even made a knight. Oh, it was nothing. Really nothing. All alone you hurdled every obstacle in sight. Now wait, now wait. Give credit where it's due. A lot of the glory goes to you. But you're the one who did it, who did it, who did it. As sturdy as Gibraltar, not a second did you falter. There's no doubt about it. You did it. I must have ate a year tonight. At times I thought I'd die of fright. Never was there a momentary lull. Shortly after we came in, I saw at once we'd easily win. And after that, I found it deadly dull. You should have heard the oohs and ahs, everyone wondering who she was. You think they'd never seen a lady before? And when the Prince of Transylvania asked to meet her and gave his arm to lead her to the floor, I said to him, you did it, you did it, you did it. They thought she was ecstatic and so damned aristocratic and they never knew that you did it. <laughs> uh, thank goodness for Zoltan Kapathy. If it hadn't been for him, I'd have died of boredom. Kapathy, that dreadful Hungarian, was he there? Yes, he was there all right, and up to his old tricks. That blackguard who uses the science of speech more to blackmail and swindle than teach. He made it the devilish business of his to find out who this Miss Doolittle is. <laughs> Every time we looked around, there he was, that hairy hound from Budapest. <laughs> never leaving us alone, never have I ever known a Rudapest. Finally, I decided it was foolish not to let him have his chance with her. So I stepped aside and let him dance with her. Charm from every pore, he oiled his way around the floor. Every trick that he could play, he used to strip her mask away. And when at last the dance was done, he glowed as if he knew he'd won. And with a voice too eager and a smile too broad, he announced to the hostess that she was a fraud. No. Yavo. Her English is too good, he said. That clearly indicates that she is foreign. Whereas others are instructed in their native language, English people aren't. And although she may have studied with an expert dialectician and grammarian, I can tell that she was a born Hungarian. <laughs> Not only Hungarian, but of royal blood. She is a princess. Her blood, he said, is bluer than the Danube is or ever was. Royalty is absolutely written on her face. She thought that I was taken in, but actually I never was. How could she deceive another member of her race? I know each language on the map, said he, and she's Hungarian, as the first Hungarian rhapsody. <laughs> Congratulations, 